In this week's blog, I'm going to show you how you can move a person out of one photo and put them into another photo using the GNU image manipulation program. This is free image editing software that you can download for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So this is why I'm doing this tutorial. Um, my client, DougBradleyPainters.co.nz, came in the other day, and we are having a look at his website, and I said, can you give me a picture of yourself so we can put it on the website um, because it helps people trust you more, which means that there's more chance that they'll contact you. And he said, yep. So he took a photo of himself with his iPhone and emailed it to me. Um, but I saw it and I went, well, but we need it to look a bit more professional. So let's put him into a place that he's painted. And I took this photo off his Facebook um, page of a place that he recently painted. And I'm going to put him into that. And then I'm going to put some text on the photo. So this is how you do it. Go back to his photo over here. Over, over in the left-hand side in this tool menu, we've got what's called the Fuzzy Select tool. So what that does is when you click on the background, it just selects an area of it. And we can see it's selected all of that stuff there, and it's even selected all these little bits. If you hold down your Shift key, you can just keep on clicking around the outside of Doug here, and it's automatically just going to start selecting all of those areas. So what I'll do is I've just randomly selected all of that. If I go Control X, which will delete what I've selected, we can see what it's doing there. But I'll just go back because I need to select more. And that's looking pretty good. Now we can see there's still little selection areas that haven't been selected. What I'll go over and do is click on the uh, rectangle select tool. And if I hold down the shift button, it'll add to the selection. So I just go click, drag over there. Now it's cleaned out all of that area. Click, whoops, that's too big. Just move that up a little bit there. And now that's cleaned out that area. Same there. And same over here. So all we need to do now is zoom in a bit closer and do some selections over there. So I just go Shift Plus to zoom in. Once you learn all the shortcut keys in GIMP, it makes things a lot faster. But of course, when you're starting out, you'll just be, um, it might take a bit longer because you'll be clicking on menus instead of using shortcut keys. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because when you do your own one, you'll have more time to do it and I don't want to waste your time. And whilst I'm doing this tutorial, you can see how it's gone over onto the shirt. I'll fix that later. What I want to do just at the time being is just get the major areas. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Right. Right, show you another tool. So this is called the free select tool. And it allows you to draw a sort of a pattern around that will, that will do a selection. So if I go click, click there, that'll do. And then I join up at the end node there. See how it's taken all of that out? And I'll just go up the top here. Oops, we can see a bit over here I need to clean up. That's looking good. Not too bad up there. Right, you can see, oh, I'll just do this a little bit, um, being too much of a perfectionist because it doesn't really matter. There we go. Um, we can see here it's gone over onto the shirt, so I want to remove that selection. Over here you just click subtract from the current selection and you draw around that like this. And now that's good. Um, the higher resolution your photo, the better it's going to be. Unfortunately, this isn't very high resolution, but sometimes that's all you've got to deal with. Now, what we can do to um, fix that a little bit. Oh, it's already turned on. It's feathered. So that's good. All right, I need to go back to 
the fuzzy select and turn on feather edges. And then if we do if we do one more click in here whilst holding down shift so it adds to the selection, what it's doing is it's actually getting closer in. See that went over too far, it actually went onto his head. So I'll go control Z to undo that. And I'm pretty happy with that. And now what we do is we go select invert. And so now it's changed the mask to just be around Doug himself. Oops, I've chopped off a bit of his ear. So I'm just going to add that back. That's close enough. And then we go control X, which cuts him out of there. And we go back to our photo over here and we go control V. And now we've pasted him in there. And I'm just going to move him to the side over here. Now he was a bit darker in the last photo. So let's brighten him up a bit. So we can see we've got our two layers over here. We've got the layer, which is the place that he painted. And then we've got his new layer but it isn't confirmed yet, so I'll just go here, create new layer. And so now he's on his own layer, I can edit him individually. So I go to colors, levels, oops, no, sorry, not levels, colors, curves, and we can just quickly brighten him up a bit, make him stand out, that looks good, looking very handsome. And now we wanna add some text in there, so we click on our text tool, and I've got some text over here that I wanna paste in. And you go control A to select all of it like that. And we want to make it bigger. Oh, and bold. So I'll go bold, make it bigger. Oops, that's too big. That's pretty good. And then we use our move tool over here. I know it's a bit hard to see. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Um, I needed, here's the text here, but I hadn't clicked on it properly. But there we go. So I'm just going to move that roughly to the place I want. But the problem is, because it's white, we can't see it on the white background. And an easy way to fix that is to put a bit of a drop shadow underneath it. So we go drop shadow. Um, it's going to be three pixels um, um, to um, below and to the right. And it's going to have a blur of five and the color, the color is going to be black. The opacity, the further to the left I am, the more transparent it is, and the further to the right, the darker it is. Um, so I actually want it to be quite dark. And that makes it stick out quite a bit. So that's how you take a person from one photo and put them into another photo and then add some text. I'll just show you the original photo again. Oops, I'll just control Z. So there's the original photo. And here's the new one, which looks like it was taken by a professional photographer.